How's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Today, it's a cold one. It is currently nine degrees outside and with the wind chill, it's saying negative three. So it's freezing. We have a no heat call, so we're gonna go out there, see what we can find. Let's do some work. This video is sponsored by RLS, original, patented, proven. And by Diversitech, helping you simplify your work. Cold? Yeah. This shit should have happened two weeks ago. Right? Yeah. That's not how it works though, is it? Yeah, no. You got some electric heat wire and uh, relays and whatnot that are weren't working, so you were only running on the refrigerant side, the heat pump side. Yeah. Which when it gets this cold out, they can't keep up. Yeah. So gotcha. they, inter they pretty much redid the whole thing, but said there's some little minor leak. And so usually I get, that's what I was saying, is like, I don't know, would, would Volt 3 on cause an issue on the heat side? Uh, yeah, in the heat pump mode, but again, we're not even really relying on that right now. Yeah. Once it get, the temperatures get back up to like in the 40s or whatever, you'll be using the pump again. Um, and then we can check it at that point. But okay. for today, we're not even going to be using it. All right, so we got them going for now. Um, I ended up replacing two of the heat sequencers and I didn't have the exact ones uh, as far as like the, the time delay that's built into these. So um, it's working, it's fine, it's just not perfect. So I told them that uh, in the next couple of days, once all this snow and everything kind of gets back to normal, um, I'm going to come back with the proper heat sequencers and. Uh, because I think from what he was explaining, the heat pump side has some problems too. So I think uh, what I'll do is I'll come back with those new, the proper heat sequencers, and then I'll check out the heat pump side, make sure it's charged adequately. Um, for now, at least we're already talking about replacing this unit because it's, it, it's old and not in, in real good shape. So anyway, uh, that's today's call. Got that swapped out, repaired a couple of the connectors because everything when it's this cold is brittle and the wires are just stiff. Um, so it makes it very hard to work with, but anyhow, got it going. So that's good. All right, so I wanted to go over some of these heat sequencers so you kind of understand how they're labeled. And that way when you're in the field, if you get to replace one, you know what you're looking for. Uh, because sometimes like this unit, you couldn't see the model and the serial number. So it's not like you can just call up the supply house and say, hey, I need this and they know exactly what you need. So if you come across this situation, here's how you can decipher what type of uh, heat sequencer that you need. So if we look at this old one here, um, if I can get the lighting right for you, the H30-90. So that means on on the make, so whenever it gets 24 volts, it's going to have a delay of 30 to 90 seconds. And then the C1-30, that is the delay on break. 
So when it loses the call, it's going to take one to 30 seconds delay before it actually um, opens back up, okay? And then secondly, you can look at them to see uh, how many poles there are. So what I mean by that is if you look at, say, this box here, 1SPST, that stands for one single pole, single throw, all right? So, and then if we look at this one, it's a double pole, single throw, all right? One means it's just one heat sequencer. It's not, not a double. Sometimes you have doubles. So, all right, so this one says double pole, single throw. That means there's two poles, there's two sets of contacts here, right? So there's four connections here. So between here and here is one pole, between there and there is another pole. And the single throw, the ST, means that whenever it gets 24 volts to the coil, both are going to close on the same call. There's, um, sometimes you can get a double throw, which can uh, act differently than this one. So that's what you want to look at, is you want to look at how many poles you have, if, if it's a single throw, and what the delay is. So we have, again, on 30 to 90 seconds, off 1 to 30 seconds. And that's what I was referring to earlier when I said I didn't have the right one, but I just went ahead and installed one anyway just to get them going until I came back with the right parts. So obviously, these are the right parts that I need. So now I'll know for sure that the electric heat won't kick on without that fan turning on, um, and it won't. The electric heat won't stay running when the fan shuts off because the time the timers are off. Um, so anyway, that's how you can figure out what type of heat sequencer that you're going to need. Um, hopefully, you can actually read it on the top of the actual relay here, or sequencer, whatever you want to call it. Right. Um, hopefully, you can read it to know for sure what the timers are. So that way you can go get the proper one and you're off to the races. You can do what you need to do. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. They make different ones. Uh, I actually have a whole bag full of them here, but you know, you can get, you know, an on delay that's one to 30 seconds. You can get an off delay that's um, like 45 to 115 seconds. So it just depends on what the unit calls for and what they have in there from the factory. And you just want to make sure you're going back with the right thing. So, but that's pretty much it. And then of course, once you install your new stuff, always test it out. Make sure that everything is, um, you know, coming in and going out the way it's supposed to, and you're not going to have any problems going forward. So you don't, you, you don't know unless you test. All right. So anyway, hopefully that made sense to you. If you want to go into more details, let me know in the comment section. Maybe I can make a separate video going into more controls, like 101 HVAC, uh, about controls and how things work. But um, anyway, I hope you guys liked the video. It was a freezing cold day, but we made it through. And, you know, this is Tennessee. We're not used to this weather. You northern uh, folks, this is probably just a walk in the park for you guys. But anyway, give it a thumbs up if you guys like what I'm doing. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And until next time, see you later.